Hey everyone, today we are going to work on um, some portraits that are inspired by the artist Frida Kahlo. Now, before we get started, I want you to think about what sort of materials you have at home that might work for you to draw a portrait on. I've worked on a few examples. Um, you could use, if you have something like copy paper, um, you can use copy paper or notebook paper. On that, you could use crayons or markers. If you happen to have some thicker paper, more like watercolor or mixed media paint, um, you could use watercolor, or I'm also gonna show you how to paint with coffee. If you just had something like a little post-it note, you could use a post-it note. Um, if you had some old newspaper that your family's done with, you could always draw on newspaper. You can even draw on the inside of packaging. Like if you have an old cereal box, you can cut off one side and you can even draw on the inside of a cereal box. So use whatever you have. Um, think about what kind of supplies you have and then we can get started. Okay, so I am going to work on one on a piece of heavier paper. This is mixed media paper. Um, it's just a little bit thicker than copy paper, so things like paint, or in our case, coffee, um, will stay where it's supposed to go and not tear up the paper. Um, when you paint on copy paper and notebook paper, it's just a little bit too thin, and sometimes it tears and the colors don't show up as vibrantly. All right, so I am gonna make sure my paper is where you can see it. Okay, it looks good. Okay, so on our paper, the first thing we need to kind of establish is dividing the paper into equal parts. That will give us some guidelines as to where we're gonna put our facial features. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold it. Now you can bring the top half of your page down match your corners up as closely as you can hold it down with one hand press with the other hand and you can open it back up and you'll have a crease that goes right across the middle that's just a guideline for you when you're drawing your portrait so i can show you which way to go now you're going to fold it the opposite way i think you guys call this hot dog style so fold it across this way make your corners match press it down and fold and open it back up. So you should be able to see on your page that you have a line right down the middle and a line right down the middle. Okay, so on your face, everyone looks different, but we kind of have some similarities with our faces and there are some basic proportions and proportions are just the sizes of your face, like different features in relation to the, part of the other parts of your face or your face as a whole. Um, so we want to be sure that those proportions are pretty accurate. Um, now on my piece of paper, it's a little bit bigger than a sheet of copy paper. This is a sheet of copy paper, um, but not by a whole lot. So I'm going to start on this sheet of paper. If you have a smaller piece of paper, then you may need to adjust your proportions down to fit on your piece of paper. Um, so on mine, I'm going to start right around this line that goes across the middle and we're going to work on what's going to turn into our face shape the sort of jawline now it's basically a u shape um, some of us have smaller chins some of us have wider jaws and you can kind of adjust that shape in general but you want to leave a little space on either side and we're kind of trying to center that so that everything else in your face will be centered so leave a little space on the sides of your page and I'm gonna draw lightly with my pencil. Now, sometimes we have a hard time in school. We press down really hard. You hold your pencil like this. When you're drawing something like a portrait, always draw light so that if you make a mistake, you can erase it. Um, so I'm gonna draw lightly, make these little short kind of sketchy strokes. Now I sort of, mine tapered in just a little bit for my chin because my chin is more narrow then my jaw is on the side. And I'm gonna to try to make the same kind of shape on both sides. If it's not right, I can kind of extend it a little bit. See how I did there? And go right back up to that middle line. Anything I didn't like, I'm just gonna erase it. So this is gonna be sort of my chin. And if you're not sure about the shape of your jaw, it's kind of nice that you're at home. You should have a mirror somewhere in your house so you can always look and see what sort of shape your face has. 
All right, so we've come to here. I'm gonna extend this line up on both sides on this paper by about an inch. Just try to make a match on both sides. All right, so we've got our basic shape here. I'm not gonna add the top part of the head yet. Right now, I just wanna focus on putting our eyes in. Now this middle line where we fold it across, that's about where our eyes go. Now, they don't go super close together. You need to leave, depending on the size of your paper, maybe about a finger width in between, just as a starting point for those eyes. And then if you left a finger in between, this is about the size of one of your eyes. So about two fingers on my paper, one finger there, one finger there, is gonna be about the size of this eye, one finger there, one finger there. So each of my eyes is about two fingers wide. All right, so once you have those kind of marks, all of our eyes vary. You may have bigger, wider eyes, or you may have kind of more narrow eyes, depending on the shape of your eyes. But basically eyes take kind of a rainbow shape here. So draw your curved line between those points for the top of that. I'll go ahead and do that line over here too. You wanna kinda of make a match. Your face usually has a good bit of symmetry. Then you're gonna do the same kind of curved line that goes underneath. Now again, you can look in the mirror and see if your eyes maybe come to more of a point or if they're a little bit wider. But more or less, your eyes are often sort of a football shape, not really a perfect circle shape. Now you've left some space on either side and you have your eyes kind of laid out. Now, inside the eye, you have the colored part of the eye, which is called the iris. Now, your irises are generally circles, and sometimes you can see the entire circle, and sometimes you can only see a portion of that circle. Um, so, and if you wanna look straight ahead, they would be about in the middle. I'm gonna do kind of an upside down rainbow shape, like as if you can't see all of that iris. And mine's again about the size of my finger. Yours may be a little bit bigger or smaller, depending on the size of your paper and the size of your eyes. All right, so inside of that, you have a pupil. The pupil is the black part of your eye, and it's also a circle. And you may see all of it, or you may just see part of it. Now look and see if, you know, your eyes need any kind of work, if they're too big or too small. Now, I'm gonna to try to show you how to paint this one with coffee. So I don't wanna add eyelashes. I think those would be details that would be too small to show up on something with coffee. Um, but if you were gonna use crayon or marker and you wanted to add eyelashes, you could draw in some eyelashes. All right, so let's work our way down the face first and then we'll come back up in a minute. Okay, so you have the space between your eyes and your chin. About halfway between that line you drew and where your chin is, is about where your nose ends. Now we all have different shaped noses. Generally, the bottom of our nose is about as wide as the space here between our eyes. So if you drew an imaginary line straight down, your nose may end right about there. So I'm just drawing these little kind of C-shaped lines to show where my nose may end. Now your nose may be wider, it may be more narrow. Um, some people like to show a stronger line between your eyes where your nose may go, and that's okay too. Um, you might wanna look in the mirror and see if you can actually see your nostrils. I'm just gonna draw a little curved line where you can sort of see the outline of my nostrils. And I'm gonna do a little rounded line downwards that shows where the tip of my nose would go. Your nose may be shaped different than mine, um, but you can kind of look at the mirror and see the overall shapes. Look at some kind of curved lines that can, you can use to show the shape of your nose. And you don't have to draw, you know, if you can't see your nostrils when you look straight ahead, then you certainly don't need to draw big holes because if you can't see it, you shouldn't draw it. Now, we're gonna work our way down towards the lips. You need a little space between your nose and your mouth, almost a finger 
and I'm going to mark where the kind of lower part of my lip is right here. Again, some people have wider lips, some people have thinner lips. Um, generally, however wide they are, you may go up on either side like a little rainbow to make this part of your lip almost a V shape. And then I'm going to mark the middle of my lip with a little line here. Now your lips, I'm going to go ahead and show how wide mine would go. Now in her portraits, Frida did not smile. Um, she looked pleasant, but she didn't have a big smile. So you may choose if you want to have more of a smiling face or just sort of a straight face. So I'm going to have kind of a straight across face and I'm going to curve this line down and make it meet with that line on the lip. Now think about, about how thick you think your lips are. I'm going to draw a line here to show where the bottom of my lip would end. And I'm going to connect this back in with those sides. And be sure you've left a little bit of space at the bottom where your chin would go. If you think maybe your chin's a little bit longer, you can always make it a little bit longer there. Okay, so now we have all of our facial features drawn in. Now, most of us have eyebrows. So if you have eyebrows, they usually start at about the same distance where your eyes end and they often end where your eyes end. So we all have different shapes to our eyebrows. You may wanna look in the mirror again and see how they curve, see how thin or how thick they are. Mine are kind of thin at the ends and thicker towards the middle. And yours may be sort of a different shape. All right, so here's the middle of our page, right there. What is funny that a lot of people don't realize is that the distance between your eyes and the top of your head and the distance between your eyes and the bottom of your chin are about the same. So you may want to kind of measure this is actually where your forehead goes. A lot of people, when they are making portraits, they put their eyes right at the top of their heads up here, when really the eyes are further down. Now, you may have hair, and if you have hair, it will make your, he your head look a little bit different. I'm gonna go ahead and do a curved line between my sides and this top, sort of show where my head is. And I'm doing this lightly because my hair covers part of my forehead. Now, if you had shorter hair, then you may not have hair on your forehead. Um, but a lot of us, girls and boys, have hair that is on our forehead. So I think my hair comes down maybe about this far. I'm gonna draw that it kind of goes across. This is where I part my hair. In the back of my head, you can see even more than that. So there's my forehead. And now I'm gonna show that you can see part of the back of my head by going a little bit further with that hair. And I'm gonna say that I'm wearing my hair down. So I'm gonna bring those lines. And again, I'm gonna cover part of the sides of my head with my hair. Now, if your ears show, my ears don't show a whole lot of when I'm wearing my hair down, but if your ears show, the top of your ear is usually even with your eyes, and the bottom of your ear it's down here around your nose and your mouth, depending on how big your ears are. So if you could see your ears, then you would usually have a curved line right around there. Now, another thing in portraits is that people often draw their necks like this big, like these little bitty necks. And your neck is really almost as big as your jaw, depending on the size of your jaw. So your neck, and your hair may cover part of your neck like this. Your neck is more out here. Um, Frida Kahlo often did a very long neck on her portraits, but I'm gonna show my neck about like this. And so if you have room, 
you can curve that line outwards to show where your shoulders would be. So you should have your portrait with your hairstyle. Um, show what your hair looks like. I'm erasing some extra lines on mine. That's why we always sketch lightly. Now, at this point, I'm gonna show you how we can paint this with coffee. If you were using crayons, you would approach this a little bit differently. Um, for my coffee portrait, I didn't add in the animals and the palms and the colorful flowers like Frida often had. If you're using um, crayons or markers, you may add in if you have like, these are my daughter's pet birds that I added in here. But if you wanted to add in any of your pets or animals that you love, Frida often did her portraits with her animals. Um, if you wanted to do kind of flowers in the background, you can do that. I did show in my coffee portrait some kind of leaves and flowers in the background, but I felt like since it was all one color, monochromatic, that I wouldn't add in the flowers and the hair or the pets like I did in this one. So that's your choice. Um, when you get to this point, if you want to take a break and add in any pets, um, if you wanted to have, like she often had a, she had a pet monkey. So if you wanted to add in any animals that you love or that you have as pets, you can do that too. Um, I'm going to show you quickly how to add color with coffee. Now this is just coffee straight out of the pot that I put in a jar. It's cold, not hot, no sugar, no cream, just plain coffee. And this is just um, a very basic paintbrush that came with a set of watercolors. Um, you could also use a Q-tip. But to paint with coffee, you just dip your paintbrush in the, in the coffee and you start adding color. Now, depending on the color of your hair and your skin, you may want to paint layers of coffee. If you get a little drip, we'll just turn those into a leaf or a flower or something. See, let's add in some background. For your faces, you may want to have it a little bit darker, closer to where your hair is. And you can have some highlights or lighter areas on the high points of your face. And that would be like the tip of your nose, points on your lips that stick out a little bit higher. Add some color to your eyebrows. Now you can also use more of a mixed media approach. If you want to do part of your artwork in coffee and part of it in crayon or marker, that's okay too. Just let that coffee dry so that you're not trying to add all the different things at the same time. Now the coffee gets a little bit darker as it dries. So you want to let this layer dry before you start trying to add more coffee. You don't want your paper to tear. Add in that ear over there. And see, I'm kind of leaving a few little white spots and that's okay. And if you want to add some more leaves and things in your background, so you just do like a long line lots of little lines coming out of it. You can add all of those things. And I don't mind the splatters. I kind of think the splatters look cool in the background. So if you want to add more of that, add more of those. And then as this dries, if you decide that an area needs to be darker, you can come back and add more coffee to it. And then once you're finished, you may have something that looks a little more like this with all of your different coffee. And you can tell where I went back and added darker to some of the areas. All right, I hope you enjoyed learning how to draw a portrait in the style of Frida Kahlo and also learning a little bit about how to use coffee as watercolor.